What's up, viewers? You are watching The Scoop. I'm Noah Ringer, and we are here with Stephen Mirioni, uh, the editor of The Revenant. Thank you so much for being here, Stephen. It's, it's a rare occasion today uh, at Trojan Vision. Uh, you're here. Uh huh. It's raining in L.A. It is. And it's your birthday. Oh, how did you know? It's your yes, birthday. It is. Isn't that amazing? It is true. <laughs> Happy birthday Thank to you, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> we won't ask how old you are. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep that um, let's, let's talk a little bit about your origin, where, where you started, uh, and sure. how, how you got to where you are today. Sure. Well, I, uh, I didn't really discover editing uh, until I was in college. Um, you know, way back then, it wasn't something that, you know, you, you didn't, it wasn't common to have your own computer with an editing software suite on it and right. be able to start. So, so that's where I, I was taking production classes at uh, UC Santa Cruz. Okay. And uh, after doing a couple of projects, I, I was really struck by the storytelling power in editing, and, and it just happened to combine a lot of different disciplines and talents that I already had um, and was able to use all at the same time, you know, writing, storytelling, music, um, computers, uh, every everything about it, um, I just I became really obsessed with it, and knew coming out of school I wanted to be not just an editor, but knew I wanted to be a feature film editor, because I really I, I I really carefully read everything I could, and yeah. and in terms of understanding, you know what what an editor does, and especially on a feature film, what an editor does. That was what was exciting to me. The, the, op, the, the idea of being able to really develop as an artist and to have opportunity to take something and work with it and work with it uh, over a long period of time to collaborate with a director, to being able to, to really create and be expressive and find something. Um, you know, and yes, it's still a, a product, but at least for you know, a few months you have that that illusion that that you're actually you know making art and you're being an artist and it, you know it feels and it feels great and it's yeah. something that that feels very permanent when you're done yeah. so so I knew that and came and because of that knew I had to come to Los Angeles uh, just to have the most opportunities and started hanging out at USC um, I knew that in the future you know five ten years from now directors that I might want to work with yeah. might be coming out of this program and so I uh, answered flyers for editor people, you know, graduate students looking for editors, and that's uh, how I met Doug Lyman. Um, he had a flyer up, and I'd already done a few a few projects, and uh, but his flyer said uh, thesis film shot in 35 millimeter, need an assistant editor, yeah. um, and I was like, oh, I've I've not worked in 35 yet. I gotta I gotta check this out, and yeah. so I answered the ad and. He had hired an editor who was actually a professional editor from New York who had come out to, to you know, try to make it in L.A. Right. And she agreed to work on it for uh, like a month or so. And so she taught myself and another friend of Doug's, uh, uh, who's another really uh, accomplished editor, her name's Sarah Flack, uh, edited Lost in Translation. And you know, she's done uh, almost yeah. all of Sofia Coppola's movies. Yeah, so the two of us got taught how to sync 35 millimeter dailies wow. in a little trailer on the Disney lot. Okay. Because we were doing 35, there was there weren't 35 facilities yeah. here at, at USC, so Doug made an arrangement with Disney to like get us on the lot to work there. Amazing. So it was it was like for me, like I'd been in, you know, had just moved to Los Angeles for like a month or so and now this was happening and I, you know, spent as much time as possible um, immersing myself in that, and then um, gradually we got to the point where th that editor, she she was kind of done, and it's like, okay, I want to move on to another thing, but Doug had the equipment and the time, and he's like, do you want to just stay on? And we kept working through the summer um, on that little short film and became really good friends, and and then he, he was able to get a job um, a, f a few months after the summer, and and you know, foolishly, they agreed to hire me, and 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 we were, you know, we were then together for for quite a number of years after that. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. In that time, I'm curious. Um, you know, you have the writer who needs to find like his voice as right. he's writing his own individual, and you have like the composer. Maybe mm -hmm. he has to like find his style or like an actor, 
as an editor, is that the same process? What What is your voice as an editor? How it do you is. find that unique like, look on a film? It's a very similar process. Okay. The, the tricky thing for me was, um, and I'm sure this is true for a lot of editors, yeah. maybe less so now, but it, the editing, there's such a huge technical side to it, um, as well as the creative side, right? right? So part of it is getting your, you know, when you're first starting, a lot of the battle is just getting that, you know, I, I, I uh, grew up playing uh, the viola, so I'm a musician. So I know that in order to get really proficient at your instrument, to get to the point where you can express as an artist, as a musician, it takes a lot of practice. So I, I really applied that as an editor, learning every you know, editing system I could, making sure I knew all the different uh, computer programs, learning how to learn different setups so that if any opportunity came along, I wasn't scared by that. I could just jump on. And uh, so, so at the beginning, there was a lot of just the, the, the physical, like, how do I do this yeah. physically? Like, how do, I, uh, how, how, do, how do I push the buttons in the right way to make it right. do what I think? And so while I'm doing that, I'm also obviously trying to ve develop the actual editorial storytelling skills. Sure. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's any different now, but back then it's like, how do you teach editing? It, it's, it's, not, it, it's not a very easy thing uh, to articulate and teach right. because really everything is different. I mean, you can teach problem solving skills and, you know, but you, part of teaching that in, would involve boxing people in as well. And I think I was lucky that, you know, my education was more about finding your voice and, and finding things that are interesting to you and, and, and being expressive. And so as I was developing and as Doug was developing, you know, himself as a director, yeah. we were just kind of figuring it out. And I remember those first, uh, those first few movies that I did, those first few projects, and, and I'm talking about the features because the short things, that was all practice. Like the, the scale for, for, for me for, as an editor to, to work on a short piece, yeah. it's like the equivalent of working on a scene in a movie. And so if you've got months to work on a 15 minute piece, it's not the same as the mountain you have to climb when you're dealing with something that's an hour and a half, two hours or more. So I found myself a lot of times doing the things that I thought an editor should do. So in other words, I'd go in and I'd be cutting, I'm like, well, what would an editor do here? Oh, probably cut from this to this to this. Great. And gradually, like, I would do things that would be good or I'd have an accident that I thought was cool. Or, but, you know, you're just kind of stumbling through. And, and then um, there, were, uh, there were two things that were really, really uh, critical. There was a moment when uh, Doug and I were in the middle of our first feature that we did together, uh, a, a movie called Getting In with uh, Andrew McCarthy and Christy Swanson. Uh, it ended up going straight to video, but for us it was, you know, it was a five million dollar movie. Yeah. At that time, that was significant, and we thought, we made it, we're, we did it, we're here. Right. And, we're here. But without taking it into consideration, no, you're not. You've got to actually make an <laughs> exceptional movie, and there's all these other forces that also have to align yeah. to actually make it. But anyway, during the course of making that, uh, the producers brought in an editor to work with us, because because they knew that we were young, and I'm sure they were probably thinking, oh, maybe we need to fire one or both of them and, and <laughs> get somebody to make this movie make sense. Yeah. And uh, this editor came in, his name was uh, Stan Stanford Allen, um, really, really wonderful guy. He came in and, and sat with us and, and, um, and like just so quickly, like he said like a few things. Like he, he, he mentioned in a, in a scene, he's like, you see the scene where you're going from this... Uh, this uh, wide master, and then you go into the close-up. Well, when you go into the close-up, don't pop in on the same side. Like if the if 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 a wide master and and uh, there's a person facing the camera, when you pop into the close-up, pop into the person that you don't see because that's new information. Interesting. It, it had never been told to me. Yeah. It's an instinctual right. thing that probably people. Have, but like once he said that. Like all the years of, of like work that I'd put into yeah. that moment, it's suddenly so many things clicked into place. I'm like, yeah. of course, the, every cut has to tell you something new. Yeah. Every cut has to inform. And if it yeah. doesn't, 
then there's got to be a reason for that because you are purposefully playing with an audience's expectation one way or the other. But that that really like clicked for me and it, and it really changed like how I was looking at scenes. And then the other thing was just so simple again, just pre-lapping, like there was an exterior and then the scene goes inside and starts. He's like, why don't you guys pre-lap the dialogue from inside, outside, so that when you go inside, you know, it's kind of like you're, you're then, you're expecting the cut because you hear, and so you're kind of, not only you're helping the cut along, but you're drawing the audience. Anyway, again, like basic, basic stuff, but it had never been like said in such a simple way with something that I had been working on. Right. I'd done it before instinctually, but this like suddenly again, I was like, oh, of course. Um, and, 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 and anyway, so, yeah. so that experience plus, maybe it's a long story, but I was a psychic for a while. I had a, wow. not really, but the, <laughs> so they misprinted my uh, phone number in uh, the yellow pages. No. And people started calling me, oh asking, is this a psychic place? And of course, my answer was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Because oh, yeah. I figured, okay, this will be fun. I'll try to convince people I'm a psychic. Right. After a while, I realized I didn't have to convince anybody. Because the minute they dialed the phone, they already believed I was a psychic. And that, and, and, and that kind of clicked. That all was happening around the same time we were in Swingers. And it was during Swingers that I was realizing that the movie and everything the movie was about and... It was, it was all, we, we were all living that. We were all going through the same uh, emotions, not literally, but, it, but, but so similar. And I realized I shouldn't be trying to edit this movie like an editor. I should just be editing it like me, me, the person. Yeah. And if I believe I'm an editor, I'm an editor. The same way that these people believed I was a psychic when they called, they were already invested in that. You don't have to convince them, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'll just edit it. I don't have to convince people I'm a good editor. I'll just do it. <laughs> just do it. And, and that, that was really, uh, that to me was when I, was when I really knew, like, okay, now I, now I know what I'm doing. Right, right, that's fantastic. I hear you talking so much, and I, I love this, about relationships. Mm -hmm. and it seems like that's like a major part of your job. Talk a little bit about your relationship with like the different people that were like crucial to this movie that you worked on. Oh, movie. certainly. Um, Chivo, Ritu. Yeah. Talk about some yeah. of them and what it was like working with them. I mean, uh, every, every project, you know, you, you, it always ends up being about the team, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, and, and, and especially with, with Alejandro, um, he, he, he is such a, he's such an amazing leader in terms of, uh, you know, and, it, and it's a really tricky thing, like, to be able to lead and collaborate, not just in, like, do this, do this, do this, but to, to lead artists, mm. to inspire artistic people to perform the, you know, what they do and how they do it. Um, he is incredible at it and, and he knows and appreciates when he's around, you know, and surrounds himself with people um, that are excited and enthusiastic and will really knock themselves out to, you know, go, go as far as it's gonna take to, to do what it is that's in his mind or to attempt that. And so, you know, for me, um, as the editor, it's, it's always, um, it, it's, a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult uh, balance because while they're shooting, I, I have to keep a little bit of a distance, right? The instinct yeah. is to just, and, and, and that's the thing, like especially with, with people like Chivo or Jack, Jack Fisk, uh, the production designer, uh, they're such friend, like their whole vibe is we're a family, we're a team, we're doing this together and yeah, exactly yeah. and come to the set and see what we're doing. Great. Great. I would love to participate in that, but there's a n negative side mm. to going too far into it. Yeah. The negative side is you lose some of the objectivity and perspective mm. that's part of the job at right. that point. You know, I need to be able to watch the dailies uh, after they've finished their extremely hard day and watch it like the audience is watching it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Without knowing how, you know, what a you know, hard thing. Of course, from what we did with Birdman and what we're doing with, with Revenant, it's changed that, that pattern a little bit with me because right. I end up, I have to be pulled in very early on 
to planning how the scenes are shot and, and so, yeah. exactly and and knowing you know instead of just reacting really having to you know because because an editor one of the things i've learned through the years is patience like you don't have to a lot of times especially uh if you see uh early on producers who haven't worked that all you know for that long don't have that much experience they get very you know you can tell because they're very desperate mm -hmm. or everybody wants to be heard so desperately because they're worried that okay if i don't get my point of view across you know but me i know anything i think of anything i want to try i always get to be alone with the movie whenever i want i can right. try it right. so it puts me in a position where if i disagree with something or if i have another idea I'm going to oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to wait. I'm going to I'm not going to insert myself into things. But this is a situation where if I see something I have to really be more proactive. And so, you know, that's a and that's a tricky thing because you're being proactive with people who are out there dealing with a reality on the yeah. set and I'm still dealing with the imagination of you know what it might be, what it could be. I don't know. It's incredible. It's such a it's such a like like you were saying it's a transition for you because I the, it, like Birdman, it almost seems like like they're trying to remove your job. It's like no, right, man, we right, love, right. We love what he does. Yeah. So how has that been? Like, I mean, that's incredible. Like, no. Well, it's like making it so seamless. I yeah, mean, like, I mean, your role in the 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 beauty of that is, of yeah. course, it's the the illusion is that there's no editing going right. on. The you know the illusion is well, we're under the pretense of that, that. And and I think that you know Alejandro probably wants to believe that too that yeah. like it happened in his head i mean i think every director ultimately they're trying to do that mm -hmm. always they're chasing after that there's this movie that's in their head yeah. and they and, and and they can't touch it and they can't but and and that's what they want and they want ultimately to like just go straight from their head and happen right. but the through the course of making the movie you you end up following that chasing that mm -hmm. but something else happens something else is made you find something else along the way that you don't actually control even though you made it even though it came from you you probably weren't necessarily chasing that particular thing right. birdman was the closest thing to that um in, in the sense that that alejandro alejandro knew that he wasn't going to have that time after he finished shooting of being able to be super neurotic and like go over every single inch of the movie and try every single idea and make sure that oh maybe this maybe try that like that's a process that he loves yeah. right. and he was having to give that up and i think for him i think part of that was just it was a point in his life where he wanted to really challenge and shake himself up mm -hmm. and i think he knew that that he was getting into a rut as a as a director as an artist that he might have probably felt like he was losing some discipline because, you know, as an editor, you can uh, during the editorial process, you can change anything. You know, every single little mistake or thing that was, you can hide that, you can change that, you can turn it into an asset, everything. Um, but for this, he, he, he approached it saying, I may not have that opportunity. And, and it forced a discipline. And I think that's the thing, a, a, a discipline that he hadn't been employing not to say that he was undisciplined before, but a different kind of discipline in terms of the, the, the commitment to the storytelling and the commitment to that. So, so again, that was it, it. And then for me, it became about being able to still, because it does, doesn't mean that they would finish the day and he'd say, okay, we got the take perfect, that's it, one take, done, no. Yeah. You know, they're shooting, the, the longest take was maybe four or five minutes, yeah. right? right? Most of them are like two minutes, okay? So, and you know, they do 20, 30 takes of things, yeah. and inevitably there'd be something that he loved from take five and something that he loved from take seven. Right. And so beyond just the initial, like working with rehearsals, working with, uh, um, you know, the, the script reading or whatever it was to, to try to make sure that, that the story was going to make sense because, yes, we couldn't take big chunks of the movie and reshuffle it, um, but the internal mechanics of the scene, which is the you know, majority of what an editor is doing anyway, there was still a lot of freedom and a lot of things that we could do, but it meant that instead of just, you know, again, in terms of discipline, bring a discipline, instead of me thinking, oh, if I need to make the scene move a little quicker, yeah. I'll just 
you know, cut back in here. And every time I cut, I'm going to, you know, pre overlap them a little bit more and tighten it up a little bit more with every cut. I couldn't do that. I had to find a different way to do that. And so we found ways to do that. Um, and that was really exciting. And now, of course, like I can't help, like I can't help now but watch something and be looking for opportunities to put in a cut that's going to be invisible. Um, like I, I was watching yeah. The Martian. I was watching The Martian. It was so funny. Yeah, yeah. And watching The Martian and in early on, Matt Damon is like talking into the monitor, right? Yeah. And the thing would be like, bzz, bzz, it would like, there'd be this, this static. And, and, and I was like, oh, wow, there must be something with the, uh, with the have unit that he's in or something. It's like, I'm like, no, they're hiding cuts in the, bzz. every time they're static, they're hiding cuts. Fantastic. And again, like, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Right. Because it, again, but, but like, I, 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 I don't know, like, that's just now a new part of the arsenal is, uh, you know, looking at, looking at takes, for example, like, you know, they do a take. 20 times. Yeah. The camera move in all those takes is pretty much the same. So you just look at that and say, okay, where can I right. put something and then try it and and then, you know, hope that VFX can make it completely invisible and right. and you know, 99% uh, of the time they could do it, right. um, which was it was really cool. That's too cool. Yeah. So our viewers want to know, they're all a little jealous of you. Yeah. How many hours yes. of footage have you spent watching Leonardo DiCaprio crawl in the <laughs> somewhere? Anyway, there was a lot. <laughs> a lot. That was, was a lot. It was funny that there was a point. There was a point um, we'd been we'd been working for for a while, yeah. and and you know you're when you're when you're when you're first working with a movie, it's it's not really about making it shorter. It is a little bit, you know, but but you're really working scene, 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 scene. Right. So you want to make right. sure you know. Yeah. What's the what's the best part of each scene, and right. and 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 then we then we switch gears right, and we're starting to try to compress a little bit, and we had the movie down, and this is before we shot the ending, by the way. So it was wow. still we still had another five or ten minutes yeah. left to put in the movie. Yeah. The movie was down to about two hours and fifty minutes, something like that, and we watched the movie through, and it was you know it was hard, it was a hard you know, and, and not just from from Leo and, and his journey, but. There were a lot of other strands of like the other uh, group of trappers, their whole journey getting back. We really followed a lot. Anyway, okay. gotcha. Alejandro turns to me after we finish. He's like, that's it, that's it. Can't be any shorter. Can't be any shorter than that. <laughs> and I knew like, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, of course it can't be any shorter. Um, <laughs> but, but I understood what he really was getting at from that was, yes, obviously we did get it shorter, yeah. but what he got from that screening was he finally he got that sense that he wanted to feel and we actually did get the movie much shorter um, about 15 minutes shorter than what's in theaters now wow. and we watched it and and it was really fun movie to watch right. really fun but it lost that it lost a lot of the immersion it had a distance because it was comfortable it was very comfortable to watch you understood the story but you weren't, you weren't feeling it on a visceral, emotional, uh, subliminal level the same way. And that's what makes Alejandro so completely brilliant is he, he had this, you know, he didn't have the insecurity of looking at that and thinking, oh, that's the movie that, you know, everybody's going to love it and they're going to pay a lot of money and, you know, everyone's going to go see this movie because it's totally comfortable and it's what everybody expects. Right. You can eat your popcorn and really enjoy it. He was like, I got a, I lost something. I lost some of what Leo is living and feeling in that. I lost, he just, he lost some of the experience of it. And so we restored that and got it back to where it needed to be. And I guess the, you know, the, the point of that is just, yeah, there's a lot of, there was a lot of footage of crawling and yeah. walking and suffering. And I, both of us feel right now that, there's exactly the right amount of it that's in the movie right now. What a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. What was like one of the like the biggest challenge you faced in editing this film? <sighs> there were so many. Um, was there an argument or something? Was there any like conflict? No, no. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, it's funny. I, I, it's been so long since I've been asked that question. Like yeah. people, people used to really like uh, want to know like. Uh, 
what happens when you want to do this and the director wants to do that and you know like th that that doesn't happen like for that's me fantastic. but it's it, i think that's for me, the experience of editing isn't about ego, and it isn't. I mean, sometimes it is, but it, you know, in, in terms of just my own personal, like I want to be able to wrestle this footage and do what I want. Yeah. But it, it's about it's about if Alejandro, like being really keyed in to Alejandro and what he's feeling in that day, for example, and like telling me, like for example, some of the dream sequences we 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 had. This was a challenge. Like the, the they were they were written and designed to be. Um, uh, very abstract originally, um, and then as they were shooting, uh, Alejandro wanted to use it as a tool to fill in uh, Glass's backstory and and be more literal, right? Yeah. So they shot a lot of a very literal storytelling, narrative like flashback type stuff, and anytime we would put too much of that, I could tell like he was feeling. He was feeling like it, it doesn't feel dreamy anymore, and so so the the so hearing that reaction of his, then I would go back in and and try to figure out okay where did it where does it cross the line from too much information to being too literal to to then suddenly I, no I I want to maybe not know exactly what's going on and let it be abstract so like that's a big challenge and that's something where um, you know again that's a good example of what I'm doing with my job is being as flexible as possible and and trying all these different things so that because again the 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 great thing to me about feature filmmaking is it is a, a single person's voice ultimately even though it's a team and a collaboration right. to arrive there we're all working and all trying to to really understand and and get across this point of view that's coming from the director mm -hmm. Um, coming from Alejandro, from his heart, from his soul, and so that's my job: is to is to to intuit and to to really key into him emotionally and and psychically, and try to try to perform uh, through putting things together and trying different things. You know, to make the audience feel what he wants them to feel. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. To conclude, I mean, what are your thoughts? You've already got one. <laughs> what's, what's this like? Are you excited? Or, or? Totally excited. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's an especially thrilling thing because we've got everything. Everything's happening. It's yeah. like uh, having so many nominations means all of my friends and coworkers who who did right. such incredible, uh, breathtaking work are are getting to share in in this. Um, the fact that the movie uh, is has been received so well and is so popular and so many people are seeing it, um, you know, that's something that that you cross your fingers with something like this that it's going to happen. And 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 I definitely I credit that to 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 um, Mr. DiCaprio. I mean, he, the the fact that he's he's still willing to take a risk. Uh, in turn, like the fact that he's able to do a movie like this and 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 be so uh, be so bold in those choices and right. still have them uh, be financially uh, successful means that just more and more of us are going to get chances to keep making these kinds of movies that that push a little farther than than what's comfortable. You know, like I was saying. Yeah. So that I'm just really grateful about. No, it's it's fun. There's nothing that's not fun about it. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah. You've been fantastic. My pleasure. I'm Noah Ringer, and you're watching The Scoop.